investors spend a lot more time analyzing the buy than they do the sell. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things that we with that systematic strategies do is they sort of embed this disciplined sell strategy or sell discipline into the process. And so I think what we want to talk about today is what goes into that. And then we can talk about the advancements that we've made with the way that we rebalance portfolios, both on a set um, frequency and then with our new tax efficient strategy that we've basically developed over the past couple of years. Yeah, I mean, I think your initial point is a really good one because everyone has trouble with selling. It's not just individuals, it's professionals, even people who manage quant portfolios like us. Everybody thinks about, you know, why am I going to buy these stocks? But no one really thinks about how am I going to sell them? And so selling is, is a huge issue for everyone. And, and selling is also where biases can be the biggest problem because you, you have things like the endowment effect where you value something you own more than if you didn't own it. So if I own Apple Computer, I may look at it differently and analyze whether to sell it differently than if I was, you know, object, objective and didn't own it at all. And you have things like, you know, you, you tend to hold on to your losers too much. So all the biases and problems we have all tend to come in with selling. So it can be sort of a perfect storm of problems. So it, it's really important to have a sell system. And it, it's, you know, there there is no perfect sell system, but it's really important to have one. And I think it's really important to set it up in advance before you get to the point where you're deciding whether or not to sell. Yeah, and I think the, the first question is like, why, what would prompt you to sell, sell a security? Like, let's just say you're picking an individual stock. Forget quant for a second you're picking an individual stock, like what would be the reason to sell the security? And what I would say there is, and this is basically just repeating what Buffett has said, you know, if the fundamental reason you bought the company has changed, then that is at least, you should be considering selling at that point. Now, a lot of investors don't even, they're kind of just picking stocks randomly. They're just, it's maybe they like the company, they, they like the product. So there's not like a hardcore valuation build up or work up or they're looking at the financials in detail. But, you know, even in the case of you, if you like a product, like if you are buying Apple because you love their products, but you see their products start to deteriorate or you see a change in the quality or something like that. I mean, maybe that's a reason that can be a basis for investors, you know, selling. Yeah, you know, even in your example is sort of for a non-quant, and I think that's a good place to start. You know, even if I'm not a quant investor and I buy a stock because, you know, its P-E ratio is low and I expect it to have consistent earnings growth and I expect it to take market share, well, that's probably a good st starting point for what would make me sell. I have those three reasons I bought it. Well, now over time I can monitor those three reasons and I can say what's changed with them. Mm -hmm. And if something changes substantially enough with those, that might be a reason to look at selling it. So, and that's what I was getting at before is I think it's really important to set that stuff up in advance and to say, you know, here's where I, why I bought it. Here's why I might consider selling it because you can do that when you're not feeling all the, you know, the biases are not affecting you that are going to affect you when the market's moving up and down. And if you set that in advance, you know, and record that, that can probably be a, a, a really big help, even if you're not a quant investor like we are. Yeah. So it's like a simple checklist. You know, I bought this stock because of these reasons and revisiting that from time to time, particularly at, you know, the beginning of the year here. I mean, I think that's a good time for investors to be reviewing their portfolios, not only their asset allocation, but also the stocks they hold and just seeing, has anything changed? Are these companies still worth holding? No, I was going to say, Med Faber has a really good thing he says about this, mm -hmm. which is he, he sort of talks about if, if you were building your portfolio from scratch today, what would it be? And, and that's a good way to look at selling, I think, to some degree, because if what you're sitting on right now, what you're holding is completely different than what it would be if you if you were to start anew today, well, then you probably have some selling to do. You know, obviously taxes and things have to be considered, but you probably have some selling to do to get your portfolio to where you want it to be.